Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back. Well, it's Lumberjack Day today, so stick around. Well, sadly, I've got a tree that didn't make it. We had some really hot weather this summer and had the tree trimmed last year with a trimmer, but it just did not make it. And so I've got to start bringing it down. It breaks my heart because I planted this tree, a little jacaranda tree, many years ago. And so anyway, I needed a tool and I went out to Harbor Freight and got like the least expensive pole chainsaw that I could find. Now, normally you don't do things like that, but I don't anticipate a lot of use for this saw. I'm just going to use it now, see how it works out. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. So I picked this up at Harbor Freight. It was the cheapest tool that I could find at any of the stores, and I realized there's always a risk for that. But it works off the cord, off 110 not batteries. I've got so many tools that require rechargeable batteries uh, that I'm kind of burned out on that. But a tool like this will get used only occasionally and it's just not worth having a battery management all year just to use this tool just once in a while. So I'm going to go with the corded and we'll see what happens. Now I'm a big fan of electric chainsaws. I've had this saw that I inherited from my father-in-law many years ago. It's an old Sears chainsaw and I've cut down a few trees with this thing. It's electric. It's really never given me much of a hassle. I just didn't want the maintenance responsibilities of having a gasoline chainsaw. Again, I just don't use it that often. I use it intensely for a few days and then it goes back in the shed for years. So the electrics saw was perfect. Perfect chainsaw for me. Even though it's not a big monster saw, you have to take your time. But it's eventually able to get the job done. But today, I don't want to have to climb up into a tree, stand way up high on a ladder, which I would need to do with this saw. So this is going to be the tool for me today. And I'll see how far I can get with it before I have to switch over to the other chainsaw. I'm not going to do an unboxing. I'm going to get it set up, and if all goes well, I'll show you what I was able to do with it. I don't know that I want to do a lot of filming while I'm trying to cut stuff off the tree because it's a heads-up situation, and I just don't want to have to worry about the camera while I'm worrying about my legs and arms. Well, the temperature is still in the 30s outside, so I've got some time here in the shop to put this together you can see this has got Oregon parts to it you can get this stuff anywhere so that's uh, pretty good news that I can get a bar and Oregon chain I mean even at Lowe's they carry this stuff so I have high hopes for today's project so let me get busy get this together got some uh, bar and chain oil get it oiled up I'll put it to work and I'll let you know how it goes. So real quick, if you haven't messed with these before, there is a tensioning screw here and you got to run that all the way back to put this bar on here. And this little pin here controls how much outward pressure there is on the bar. And you wrap the chain around the, the drive here and According to the directions here, they want just a little bit of wiggle. You don't want that chain super slack because it can, it can catch and uh, that's not good. So basically you can see I've got this planted in the slot here where it'll slide back and forth and tighten up the blade that way. Put the cap back on it, put the bolt in, and we're good to go. The, if you've never used a saw like this before, they're obviously top-heavy. In other words, this, this thing is going to be 8 or 10 feet above your head. So you've got to kind of plan carefully. This one is in a straight line. Some of the saws are angled over. I think those would be a little bit more efficient for cutting. So don't be surprised if you get a little more tired than you anticipated by having 
to balance this weight and don't cut over your head. You don't want to cut anything that's going to fall down onto your head, so make sure you're off to the side of whatever you're cutting. All right, we're all oiled up, got our gloves. Let's go have some fun. Well, I'm just getting started, but I'm taking a little break in the action. And I'll show you one of the bigger pieces I've been able to cut so far. One thing that seems really handy is the, is the way this easily extends and retracts. So I got down off the where I was cutting from and shortened the handle back up and I can trim up some of the pieces very easily this way. All right, you can see we're really making progress on this tall tree. I've got some expert help from my son-in-law, Chris, today. And he's rigged up this belaying line where we tie that line to the branch we're gonna cut. And it hooks back on one of the other branches and allows us to drop the limb without it hitting us in the head or going through the picture window. And as it turned out, my full-size chainsaw, the chain was too dull. So we've actually been cutting all this tree down now with the little dinky Harbor Freight trimming tool and it's been working awesome. And there it is. Most of the tree is down. The rest of it I can just reach standing on the ground. Look at that pile of lumber. We took that all down just with the Harbor Freight pole saw. Now there were a few times when I had to cut from both sides of the limb, the trunk, and then there were a couple places when I had to use this little manual saw on a stick to just cut the last couple of inches near the center to free up the limb. The saw has like a nine inch blade and there's only so far that can penetrate in there from wherever you're standing on the ground. But I am sold on this little saw. It's fantastic. Look at the size of this lumber. Now this little pole saw is not meant to do this, but it worked. I had to cut it from each side, but it got the job done. Well, I'm going to wrap it up there for right now. What's my ultimate review on this Harbor Freight pole saw? It's a winner. It's already paid for itself on this one task alone. So I think I put oil in it just once. Never had to readjust it. This thing is a workhorse. It got the job done. Is it a professional tool? Of course not. But for DIYers like me, this is perfect. Very minimum expense. And I'll probably get a number of projects out of this before I wear it out. Well, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you right here next time.